Welcome back to the talk show episode of William Angus Instead Slate. Today, my topic is all different topic. It's luxury hotel area. I have very eminent personality with me to talk about luxury hotel area in Sri Lanka. He's Lucas Penke. He's Polish. He's going to be talking about luxury tourism, and he's a group general manager of Teardrop Hotels in Sri Lanka. Hi, Lucas. Hi, Kasim. Thank you very much for having me on your show. Thank you very much for giving your time for this show. Yes, let me show you the place. Uh, welcome to Alawa. Thank you. Hi, Lucas. Hi. How are you? Very good. Thank you. So, Lucas, uh, now we'd like to hear your story because it has a very impressive areas of uh, hoteliering, luxury tourism, also Maldives, Malaysia. Thai, uh, not of, not Thailand. Thailand is your favorite destination, though. I will talk to you later. So, talk about your experience in hoteliering. How you came into the hoteliering? Yeah, it's been um, nearly twenty-five years. It is um, by now. A long. So it's a long, uh, long uh, story to talk about. But I'll try very briefly um, go over the you know more important uh, uh, destinations and properties I work for, and what actually. Uh, let me into it. So um, it was uh, uh, it was about 25 years ago when I started. When I was still in a in a high school, and um, after the school, you know, we've been uh, um, some of us we've been you know also trying to get some extra money. So working the part time uh, as a as a waiter. Uh, you know, on the events, different events. Uh, this is in Poland. This it? is back in Poland. Right. Yes, this is back in Poland where I'm from, and uh, we were, uh, you know, by the time as a you know young students, uh, hungry to explore different areas. Uh, so it was just out of uh, first of all interest of you know what you can actually do, but also an opportunity to get some extra money. Um, I was back then working in a different uh, for different events uh, in F&B as a waiter exploring that area. So pretty much uh, working time to time from you know uh, early afternoon into the next day mornings, right? So they were pretty tiring. What was the city uh, look at? Uh, the city was Poznan. That's, that's where I'm uh, originally from. That's where I was born. Um, so we've been going to different events uh, and I must say that that was, you know, quite uh, an exhausting, exhausting work to do uh, by the time. And I feel it really for colleagues in that in food and beverage. I know exactly what it means because I've done it. Um, but that did not discourage me um, on the way. And uh, when the opportunity arise, you know, I was uh, very much, uh, you know, very much willing to stay between that industry and explore even further. So um, in 2005, um, I got an opportunity to visit China. I um, was invited by my brother, um, my family and I visited uh, an Asian country for the first time. And it was an eye-opening experience uh, to us. We went only for a short holiday. Uh, but to, you know, where? Uh, to to the city of uh, Shenzhen. Shenzhen. Uh, Shenzhen. It's in Guangdong province. Okay. That's uh, across the border from Hong Kong. Um, and as I said, an eye-opening experience because first first of all, I've seen such a large city in my whole life, a buzzing city. I've seen the the scale of development and what's going on. And I've actually was you know very much looking forward to maybe start something um, in Asia. So when I uh, got back to, to Poland, um, in, in about four months, I was already on the train uh, to China. Okay. So again, another interesting experience because that was a tra Trans-Siberian line that took me all the way through Europe and Asia to China um, and took me two, two weeks to get to, to the destination. Uh, but uh, you know, this is the whole where the whole my career started. Um, after a couple of months of you know searching for a job, I didn't have anything set up so far. So it was a pretty brave um, decision to be made. Um, also considering the fact that I have left my family behind back in Poland. Um, but uh, because I still had a brother in China by the time, I I was you know I wanted I wanted to try. After a couple of uh, months, I. Uh, I got my first uh, assignment in uh, a city hotel, four-star hotel, a local hotel, 
as a management trainee. Okay, management trainee. A management yeah, trainee yeah, yeah. in food and beverage food department. And beverage. So it was kind of a, a, a continuation of what, what I've done in Poland, but a completely different way. Uh, now, the most crazy part about it is the fact that... Let me interrupt. Uh, Lucas, now you were in Europe and coming to Asia. It's two different uh, cultures, two different ways, right? Of course, in hoteliering also you find the same uh, differences. How, do you find, how did you find that difference? Yeah, so as I said, you know, it was the first assignment for me. Um, definitely a very new ways uh, of, of, of managing hotels, that different ways of communicating. Uh, but most importantly, uh, you know, very crazy decision maybe I've made that by the time because um, I didn't speak Chinese. Um, my English was very poor. Okay. <laughs> so you can imagine yeah, you know, yeah. a foreigner in China speaking Polish, uh, it, it may not be very smart. Um, but I was, I think, brave enough to, to take that challenge and, to, you know, I picked up the Chinese and English, you know, pretty fast. You can uh, speak Chinese? You learned there? Yes, I oh. actually learned Chinese in China. Yeah. Um, I must say I'm uh, quite fluent in Chinese by the time. Um, well, we get into that, but then, you know, it's, it's been 10 years, actually. That is uh, one of the China right long. decisions that you have made. It, yeah, it was, it was <laughs> right now. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Right now, I think it's 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 kind of paying off. Um, but it was challenging, you know, the first couple of months, you know, uh, with, with with that language buyer, uh, it was a bit of a struggle. That's, uh, you know, why it actually pushed me, the situation pushed me into into studying the language very Chinese? quickly. Sorry. No, that is that is something that I haven't managed. Oh. I can uh, type it. I can type it uh, on the on the phone uh, using Pinyin, um, but I can also type it just, uh, you know, um, maybe up to 200 uh, simple characters. So that's way not enough to to, to read uh, um, uh, newspapers. But for can, can, can speak. Uh, definitely, yeah. that's that's kind of most uh, important, I think, in China, um, in any country, I would say the verbal communication, it's, it's the key. Um, uh, that was essential. That was essential for the, at least you know first couple of years uh, uh, working with Chinese people, um, uh, where very often uh, department heads and above uh, do uh, speak English. But it's not as obvious, you know, for um, um, for people uh, below this level. So, you know, like it or not, you need to speak with your drivers. You need to speak with um, you know porters and and. And so on, and they are not uh, often um, um, English English speakers. So, um, so that, how long were you in China? I was in China ten years. Ten years. Uh, so starting from you know 2000, early 2005 until uh, you know late uh, 2014. Actually, uh, I'm saying ten years because it's easier. Constantly. 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 Uh, moving from um, you know maybe one city to the other, or province to the other province, um, and. I would just just to, to very quickly go through this, uh, I've, I've landed in, in Guangdong province in the city of Shenzhen. Uh, I moved to Guizhou. That was my second assignment in five-star local hotel. Now, um, quite significant actually a step in my career because I was uh, was back then already communicating in Chinese, and I have taken another challenge. That was uh, to um, to uh, go for. Uh, the golden key, a concierge uh, um, a recognized symbol. And, and, and I have actually been approaching uh, John Sendung, the president at that time of the Golden Key Association, okay, okay. Le Cledor, and was the very first foreigner in China okay, yeah. by that time who received that prestigious, yeah. uh, um, prestigious certificate. Um, so basically you were in front office team? Or yeah, I was in the front, front office, office team. team. So, office you know, starting like Lidl, yeah. the first the first assignment was uh, as a management trainee in food and beverage. But then when I moved to Candy International Hotel, uh, that first five-star hotel I worked for, um, I've actually moved into uh, rooms division. Okay. Rooms and, rooms. and I think that was very smart because, uh, you know, being in, in a completely new environment, new country, you want to uh, kind of start from scratch and ideally in and something that can help in your career later. So food and beverage uh, was a solid experience, uh, a good couple of years back in Poland and then in China. And then when I shifted into rooms, I think that gave me the pretty solid experience for the future 
uh, growth as are two of the biggest operational departments, right? Food and beverage Food and, and, and rooms division. Uh, uh, look at uh, uh, this is a decade you are talking about. Ten years. It's a long, long period. Maybe as one chapter of your life. So you started as a management trainee. You ended uh, as, as a general manager. General manager. Yeah, so it was very, very uh, fortunate. An interesting yeah. journey, I must say, um, because of this different decisions I've been making in my life, um, and of course a bit of. Uh, uh, a luck, I guess, uh, somewhere in between. Um, you know, I was, I was able to, to manage to, to get into the general manager position in a very quickly period of time. And your hard work probably repaid. I would say so. <laughs> I'm not saying it about myself, and let's let's other to judge it. Yeah, but yeah. yes, I, I I think it it was paying off definitely. How many brands in China um, in this decade? Well, so I've been working for, um, let's say, County International Hotel. Then I've been working for the Intercontinental. Uh -huh. um, I've been working also for Fuchin Resorts uh, for about two years. Uh, Fuchin Resort is uh, it used to be a part of uh, GA Jam, um, and uh, it was been actually funded by Adrian Zeka, and that is the, the link with Amman Resorts, which I worked later as well. Uh, into uh, then um, Imperial Springs, uh, Zhonghua, a huge project, uh, a golf club. Um, and multiple villas, uh, countless uh, food and beverage outlets, big, big project. 400 people alone in the rooms division. Oh, God. Okay, yeah. including 100 butlers. So, um, and then Amman Resorts in the end. So, I would say like five uh, major brands, brands. Uh, during that period. So, uh, now you were in food and beverage, changed to uh, rooms divisions. Correct. Then you took the path in rooms divisions or you went back to uh... no I've, I've pretty much you know starting from guest relations uh -huh. moving into front office operations okay um, and uh, Imperial Springs Zhonghua I got assignment as a, um, a director of rooms Good. and moving from director of rooms back into a smaller project but I would say very prestigious project which was uh, Amman Resorts uh, in Hangzhou, Hangzhou as a general manager okay. already so um, yeah, it was a bit of a journey, but um, it was, uh, it was uh, you know, I think one of the most uh, interesting and most important um, part of my life and professional career. From that, I will go to the second question, which is about the, the talking point today, the luxury tourism, luxury uh, hospitality, luxury hotelier. You, you are coming into a uh, luxury hotelier arena. Sometime back, I have done an episode with luxury tourism because this is all about luxury hotel eating. because it's a new concept for Sorry, all of can I interrupt you? Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. Uh, I know you want to go back to the luxury, but I think we would miss the part of my the rest of my career, which was outside of China. Oh, okay. And maybe we can touch base, touch on, base this, on, that. on this, you know, what's happened after outside of China, because then we have the Maldives and they have all these other different international yeah. experiences. I think we'll be um, pretty missing it. Yeah. So what I what I was thinking about to touch upon uh, luxury tourism and your rest of your career okay. together, and then okay. together. That's fine. Yeah. Sorry. So then right. let's go back to your question. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sometime back, I was doing a episode with luxury tourism in Sri Lanka and elsewhere. How the luxury tourism will happen, marine tourism, and so on and so forth. Uh, today, my discussion point with Lucas is all about uh, luxury hotelier. Well, how can we create luxury experience in hotels? What are the luxury hotels uh, in, in the world and how it really happens? So Lucas has a lot of experience in uh, luxury brands, uh, also luxury uh, hospitality. So Lucas, um, you can connect with your, all your uh, career, rest of it, after China. So with luxury, to, uh, luxury hospitality and the uh, rest of your career. So let's, let's talk about the luxury first. Um, I think this is a kind of a term uh, that is very often overused or misused um, by lots of hoteliers. Ob obviously, it yes. does really misuse yeah. and misspelled also. <laughs> that's, right. that's, that's, uh, yeah. that's also a yeah. uh, truth. Yeah. Um, what I'm trying to say is, you know, it's, it's becoming a slogan that people just using without thinking. Uh, or often just uh, you know putting it under under its own brand without actually understanding what the, the real actually uh, the luxury meaning is nowadays it used to be also something else and the perception of actually the luxury um, experience you know 10 20 years ago it was very different from what it is now 
Um, you know, we, we've we've used to think uh, about luxury uh, through the facility, mm. right? First of all, uh, it all started with this, you know, luxurious spaces and you know, golden chandeliers, uh, mar marbles all over, you know, huge buffets, food of food, fine dining, um, and basically well equipped uh, uh, spaces. Um, then it then became service, right? Now I think. Uh, it's a lot. It's a lot more now about the experience itself. It's a lot more about sensations. It's you know uh, the things you can see, hear, touch that you can really experience uh, through your sensations. Um, and it's very much about uh, space and time. Which, space and know, time. Yes. Which people, on, yeah. people do yeah, forget yeah. about it. You know that is uh, something um, of of uh, you know of no value because you can't buy it. You know, you, you pretty much, uh, it's it's uh, giving you an endless possibility uh, for people who are looking for spaces. I think nowadays uh, people want to be surrounded by, by you know, big areas, lots of spaces around it uh, in, a, in a very convenient and private environment, right? You, you may be on a huge big property, uh, big gardens, you know, with just a handful of guests. And, and this is what, you know, what people really feel well, you know, that's something which I wouldn't be able to afford because, you know, maybe from a big city or living in a small apartment, that's the space that, that I need. And it's not uh, only the space that the property is giving you, the property itself, but also the surroundings. So in your resorts uh, uh, by the ocean, on the islands or somewhere in the forest, you sort of feel that this whole area around you kind of, you know, you're being a part of it, what right? Kind of it, yeah. um, and and and, and you, you, that's that's enriching your experience. Uh, on the other side, of the time you know, whoever goes on holiday and you know, trying to switch off the phone, I know it's very hard, but uh, then you get the feeling of the time that you know you, you've never had, right? Uh, because of your busy life, probably enjoying the moment and enjoying the moment. And I think those uh, together with the cultural aspects of the place. Uh, um, it, it really gives the basics, you know, for a great luxury experience. Um, of course, then it comes to service, right? So, uh, but I think these first elements have to be um, really thoughtful well. So, uh, Lucas, now, how does this e uh, architecture, interior design, uh, will impact on luxury uh, hospitality? Does it matter or it doesn't matter? Well, for some wood, I mean, p different guests would choose a different um, um, hotels also because of the interior design or the, the, the entire concept. Um, as long as you can provide the experience uh, that we were talking about, it doesn't really matter whether you are in a palace or whether you are in, you know, somewhere in a, in a, in a small village, village house, yeah. right? I mean, because different people looking for different things. Uh, most important is the authenticity of that experience, right? Um, and and the yeah. sense of place yeah. and the sense of place. Because when when you travel to to Sri Lanka, you know you want to feel Sri Lanka. When you travel to um, you know to Dubai, you want to feel in Dubai, and in New York, you want to feel in New York, right? Um, it's maybe may very different for for the corporate uh, um, guests who are basically traveling for business. They need the convenience. They're not necessarily worry too much about which country they are in. But for leisure guests, um, the destination matters, right? This is where you're coming and you're not necessarily want to be in this, you know, um, uh, in the hotel that, you know, looks the same, exactly the same, uh, no matter in which country they are. And only maybe faces of people changing, right? So um, I think it's quite important to have that sense of place and to, to offer this, this cultural experience in its very best. That's what we are looking for. So uh, in your journey after China, so a decade we spent in uh, China, you started very small and became a general manager. So thereafter uh, you went to uh, Malaysia or where did you go? So right after China, uh, I, there was a short episode in my life in Malaysia. Malaysia, so, yeah. Um, I became a general manager of uh, a, a Panko Lao uh -huh. uh, resort, yeah. uh -huh. uh, a secluded island, very interesting experience. First island experience in my life. 
Um, I have uh, moved from there to Maldives. Um, again, a very different island experience because a lot more secluded. Uh, I was uh, right at all. I was back. Uh, I was back then actually in Shabiani at Actually, all, okay. uh, working for the Viceroy Maldives, and uh, being then reassigned to uh, to the uh, United Arab Emirates uh, again for just a couple of months before I move on to Turkey. So in Turkey, I was working for um, a very interesting. Um, back, to, life. back to Europe. Back to Europe. Europe. <laughs> yeah, it was back to Europe again. Um, uh, this is again, you know, being in the Maldives, uh, I, I've actually got the two interesting uh, job opportunities. One was back in China and then the one was in yeah, Europe. Yeah. Um, and I said, and it's uh, both very interesting, uh, but I think uh, Soho House, because that's, that's the company that hired me uh, and back then, they were a little bit more proactive. So they've, they've kind of uh, you know, took me on the plane, brought, brought me to Istanbul, showed me the property and I said like, you know, well, we we'll really welcome you to join us. Yeah. And I said like, well, then, you know, wow, I'm, I'm, I'm taking it. Uh, Soho House, uh, uh, based in UK, a very um, dynamic, very um, fast paced growing company uh, based in UK, um, a lifestyle brand, uh, super experience. Uh, and then um, after after that, interestingly, I have uh, moved to Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka, yeah. I was in Sri Lanka for nearly two years, um, opening a, a very interesting project uh, in the in the southern uh, province. And I've been here for two years, also as a pre-opening general manager. Um, and then from there again, Maldives, and where I actually work in in Ra Atoll uh, for the American company called The Standard. Uh -huh. um, again, since Sri Lanka was that you know yeah. dream place of mine, and dream uh, paradise for you. <laughs> that, that, that time also, uh, my family also was with me. My star, my son, he started his school, and I was actually. Uh, you know, taking the, the, the job assignment in the Maldives in a view that my family stays in Sri Lanka, so I can just come back and visit them here. Um, uh, then I was really welcoming the opportunity that I, I took and I, I, I'm, I'm working on today, uh, which is the Teardrop Hotels. So after one year with uh, the standard, I, I returned to Sri Lanka and now I'm here. Okay, so uh, now, Lucas, in Sri Lanka, I, I want to talk about uh, this bit about luxury hoteliering in Sri Lanka, right? So, um, in Sri Lanka, if you if you see luxury tourism, teardrop hotels come on top. No doubt about it, right? there are other hotels as well. So, how does this apply in Sri Lanka, luxury tourism, luxury hoteliering actually? Does it really happening uh, properly? I know teardrops is doing very well in, in that terms. Is it a suitable palette to us or is it a different uh, market to Sri Lanka? No, I think it is very suitable. I think uh, Sri Lanka is one of these destinations, international destinations that is, uh, uh, you know, it's been always in the map and, and it's been always driven by tourism. Uh, so I think internationally, definitely it's a, it's a segment that is very much needed uh, and, and it will be continue booming. I think over the next years, uh, you will see more brands coming in and you will see more hotels coming in. Uh, hopefully, Teardrop stays as a leading um, uh, hotel, brand, yeah. hotel brand uh, in the country. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm very privileged to be working for, for this brand and, and helping developing it. But uh, that's a definitely needed, um, needed sector. Um, now, also uh, domestically, you know, it's not only about international guests. Uh, the, the the pandemic period was a, a very great example of you know um, having international the the, the, uh, the domestic tourism uh, uh, turning into um, you know properties mm. like ours, where but usually you know the majority of guests would be coming from let's say UK or other uh, um, uh, countries, European countries. Uh, now suddenly you know the focus changed and then you have lots of domestic guests and travelers also even Sri uh, Lankans yeah? yeah that's what I'm saying I mean yeah. they were they were very much uh, uh, coming and enjoying uh, those type of properties 
and they stay with us till now. So even that we have this international tourism uh, um, back in Sri Lanka, we still have the, the local uh, guests uh, coming in and, and repeatedly coming to our properties. So Teardrops has seven properties uh, in Sri Lanka. So what are the areas we are talking about? So there is a seven, um, seven boutique hotels we do have. Um, we also have one restaurant in Colombo. Monsoon. Which, the Monsoon, Monsoon yeah. um, which we uh, will talk about. Uh, the seven properties uh, alone are scattered through Sri Lanka. Um, anything from southern province uh, into uh, the western province and the hill country. So anything starting from the Fort Bazaar in Gaul, um, moving on to Balapitiya, uh -huh. uh, where Balapitiya. we have property uh, called Kumu Beach. Uh, not far away because in Bentota yeah. we have another property called Lunuganga. Lunuganga yeah. um, then moving on to the Colombo side, the property which we are now here today, Walawa, Walawa. which is Walawa. And then we have also three properties in a, a hill country. In Dikoya, uh, near Hatton, a property called Camellia Hills, uh, and the Goldfell, um, up in the mountains in uh, Nuerelia, as well as the, the Ella property called Nine Skies. Uh -huh. So this is our portfolio. Um, Teardrop Hotels is one of the brands that uh, continue developing and and a very fast pace i must say um, the company is expanding um, despite the situation you know external internal um, and a, a, a bit of a bumpy road uh, that we have on the way a company continue to grow and there's a, another couple of hotels in the pipeline um, for the teardrop brand but also we've started uh, um, uh, working with a couple of different brands outside um, on the management agreement. So company grows, the team grows. Um, and also I think thanks for the, uh, the fact that, you know, we have not made um, any positions redundant during this pandemic period. You know, uh, all our colleagues stayed with us, whoever wanted to stay, uh, stay. We haven't closed the properties during this period. I think we were fully ready to open up when the business resumed into the country. So it's that's quite interesting. So uh, I'm, I will again go back to your journey a bit because it's quite intense and a very interesting journey. <laughs> yeah, I've been running, <laughs> running yeah. We started from Everything. China, Maldives, uh, Middle East and uh, Turkey. So uh, in your journey, what was the best destination for you? Um, was it a difficult question? It's, uh, yeah, it's very difficult. I, I think you, you, in, in terms of importance, um, China definitely, yeah. that's the... Uh, that's the period of time, you know, majority of uh, my working career um, I've spent in China. Uh, number two, uh, by the way, is Sri Lanka. Okay, so, <laughs> nice to hear I've, that. I've, yeah. been he I've been here already for about four years and, uh, you know, the, the plans to stay longer uh, or much longer if, 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 if possible. I'm really uh, a big, um, big lover of this uh, destination. Um, and uh, yeah, I think the interesting parts of the journey was definitely definitely China. That's where the majority of this uh, my turns in career happen as well. Um, but any country, you know, outside of uh, outside of Europe, and maybe even including Turkey, you know, it's always bring you some new experiences, some something, something new life you can learn. New cultures, new authenticity, and yeah, totally. And that that that's what I really enjoy. Uh, doing my life to, to be exploring, to be experiencing new things. Um, interesting enough, one of uh, one of the uh, passions I have outside of work is traveling. Okay, <laughs> so that that's what I wanted to come to <laughs> your hobby of traveling, right? Yeah, so, this is this is crazy, uh, right? Yeah. Because uh, for somebody who works in uh, a travel industry. Uh, having a passion outside of work, which is traveling, is, it sounds a little bit uh, uh, ridiculous, but that's true. That's what I'm enjoying most. And, you know, whenever there is an opportunity for me to travel, I do so. Um, um, I'm also, I do, you know, other things. I'm, I'm Why don't you talk about a bit about your family? Uh, two children. Right, two children. <laughs> uh, two children. Uh, well, first of all, when I move, um, when I move from, from Poland, uh, and um, we've been moving in 2007 actually the family uh, came and joined me uh, with our eight-year-old daughter by that time natalia 
uh, which uh, was growing, you know, with us in the numbers of international schools along, um, you know, our different journeys from country to country. Um, and she's uh, she's now in her early twenties and um, studying in Amsterdam um, in, in uh, university uh, psychology. So. Um, she's uh, she's that very child, first child of ours, and we also do have a um, son. His name is Mateusz, who is with us here in Sri Lanka, uh, studying in Go International School. Okay. So he's ten. <laughs> Quite interesting, Lucas. We were talking about one hobby of you, and we talked about a bit of your family. And I'm surrounded by a pool. You have another hobby to talk about, it. <laughs> well. Um, well, I, I, talking about pool, you probably referred to a passion of mine, which is diving. And you know, whenever I, I do have opportunity, I'm jumping into the wetsuit and and go diving. You know, and Sri Lanka is another fantastic destination that uh, allows me to do so. Uh, being in the southern province, you know, I I do go very often for diving in the season. And then off the season, I, I even travel to Trincomalee for diving. So. Um, yeah, it's a bit of uh, obsession of mine, uh, as it is also walking. Uh, I do walk every day. I try to walk. walk yeah, I try to walk uh, two, sometimes three hours. It allows me after work, uh, where I can really, you know, focus. I can, I can um, relax and kind of put my thoughts together. Um, so whether it's walking, whether it's jogging, whether it's a bit of a uh, fitness activities, I really do enjoy it. Um, it's such an important to keep that healthy life balance. Right. Uh, so, Lucas, now I have come to the the end of the the talk show. What is your message to the public? To the public, I guess uh, first of all, the message uh, to the students, uh, students, your uh, alumni of yours. Um, it's very important to remember nowadays to to stay strong. Um, it's to stay still and to be consequent in in your decisions that you make in your life, um, because uh, we, we're living in a difficult time. Um, I would say, despite of the situation, um, hospitality industry is really giving uh, an incredible opportunities uh, to everybody who studies. Um, it's, it's giving fantastic opportunities in so many different areas. You can explore things that other industry wouldn't give it to you. You know, you can, you don't have to become an expert in each area, but it gives you such a, a great opportunity to understand, uh, you know, anything from accounting and human uh, uh, resources related into sales and marketing, into, um, into uh, the operational departments, you know, maintenance, uh, uh, service, even production, you know, speaking of, uh, of kitchen. So uh, it gives you a really great overview um, of uh, so many different, uh, so many different areas. Um, and it's, and it's definitely uh, uh, is and always been um, an industry that is so much needed uh, uh, around the globe. So I, I do encourage every every student to continue uh, to explore and be brave. I mean, I'm, I may be an example of uh, making difficult decisions in my life, um, uh, going abroad, um, exploring the world. Um, the decisions were not easy, but you know, I can I can say from my perspective that uh, it allows you really to um, to grow, uh, to to experience and. Uh, you know, to, to see outside of, uh, you know, your little own uh, space, your little own bubble, uh, the world. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the uh, end of the talk show now. We discussed about luxury hotel theory. Also, we discussed about a bit of traveling of Lucas and uh, how luxury tourist, luxury hotel theory uh, will impact Sri Lankan industry and how it goes uh, hand in hand in future. So it was a very nice episode that we did in a lovely location in, um, in Balawa, one of the flagship hotels of uh, Tierra of Hotels. So we look forward to seeing you in another episode. Thank you very much. Thank you.